Hello, uh, welcome to the Mr. G podcast. It is Saturday morning here, late January, January 27th, 8.47 a.m., uh, coming to you from Honolulu, Hawaii, on the outskirts of Chinatown. Uh, I hope everybody's having a wonderful day, uh, wonderful morning today. If you like the Cat Lives Matter shirt, they're available at the Mr. G Hawaii Shopify store. All proceeds go to help me and the homeless, 100 homeless cats that I feed on a daily basis every day. Today's episode of the podcast, it's not about homeless cats. It's about advertising, in particular, deceptive advertising. I learned a lot about this in sociology classes at the University of Texas. Um, one thing that gave me the idea for this podcast topic episode today is the radio advertisements. I say radio, but I mean the audio ads that you hear on Spotify or in Pandora or in anything that you're listening to. It could be for a, a car company, a used car lot, a fast food restaurant, uh, any number of things. But these commercials in the last few years, they all have the same kind of uh, message at the end. They'll give, blast you a car commercial. Come down to the $99, $99 down all credit, no credit, credit, down down at the big town car sala, you know. And then at the end of the ad, or, or it's a fast food commercial. Right now, a Burger King, get a deluxe Whopper for only $1.99 with the purchase of, you know, with $1.99. But then at the end of these advertisements, they whisper. So they want you to hear something, but then at the end, they whisper something like, all rights and regulations reserved, only value on certain days, you know, not valid in Alaska or Hawaii. And the not valid in Alaska or Hawaii. That's why I started like listening to these advertisements, like, you know, like a, a fast food at restaurant or, or something will come out with an advertisement on the radio. And at the end, they'll say not valid in Alaska or Hawaii. So you, you listen to these, but they whisper at the uh, end. They're called disclaimers, but they're extremely, um, uh, diabolical in their um in their ways to uh influence it's like they're telling you like we want you to hear the first part of the commercial we'll scream it loud for you but the second part of the commercial the disclaimer we don't really want you to hear that they'll usually have music going on in the background and and people have just become accepted of it uh, my girlfriend lives in the uk and i asked her about it and she says yes they do the same thing here and it's very strange but people are just okay with it. I'm surprised other comedians, other comics haven't uh, mentioned it. I'm, I'm sure they probably have. It's just so disturbing when you think about it. Imagine somebody with schizophrenia that hears that, you know, like they're hearing a radio commercial, like trying to like determine which voices are real and which voices are not. And they hear, by the way, all right, I'm under your bed, don't I'm on the only one who can hear you. And sometimes if you listen, because I've been listening to these radio ads and like listening to the end, they really will say some fucked up shit. Like, I'm hiding under your bed. Don't tell anybody that I'm here. You know, like 2.2% financing only applies to the second Tuesday of each month with a full moon clearly showing the night before and then what you are wearing, Red Sox. All dealer markdowns apply all of the days except the week on Sundays in case you must bring your mother and the doctor that delivered you into this world to verify your identity. All other cars have a lot except for the black one under the corner back trail was sold at maximum profit determined by the sales price at the time of sale. You know, it's like, what? And they have like music going like, da, 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 da. by the way, this is a subliminal advertisement. Blah, blah, blah. It's not subliminal because it's there. You know, it's a disclaimer that's there, but they don't really want you to hear it. They want you to hear the, the first part. Come down to Bob's car lot. One dollar down, get you any car in the lot. You know, like it's so strange and it's not subliminal advertising. Subliminal advertising is a bit different. Um, subliminal advertising, an example of that would be product placement. Uh, you see that in big budget movies a lot. The most famous one I can think of is Jurassic Park, uh, the original one that when the Tyrannosaurus Rex is coming and the whole ground is shaking, they have either a Pepsi can or a Coke can, whatever the can was, it could have been Sprite, but the can just starts sh shaking like doo -doo -doo, doo -doo -doo. and you see that uh, in, in big and it's very profitable, very lucrative for these motion picture companies where, that aren't making the money uh, selling the tickets anymore and they have to find ways uh, but subliminal advertising refers to the use of images, sounds to influence a consumer's mind without them con the, the conscious awareness. An example of subliminal advertising would be an image of an ice cube embedded in a cola ad. 
A voice recording might be added to the audio of a song or interview, but at very low volume to make it almost nearly impossible to detect. Even though the volume makes the message very subtle, the listener's brain may still hear it and store it within the subconscious. Because advertisers are smart. They're aware that our brains are constantly you know, picking up all kinds of data, all kinds of information that we're not consciously registering in our thoughts. So that's an, a, an example. That's why um, I don't believe in deja vu because for that very reason, our brain is re uh, registering thousands of thoughts and thousands of images and uh, all kinds of stimulation that we're not actually thinking about or consciously aware of. So when you walk into a room and you look at a painting, you're like, I've seen that painting before. I know I've seen that painting before, but I can't figure out where, <gasps> deja vu. No, actually, it could have been in eighth grade or ninth grade or in your 20s or in your 30s, and you walked through a, uh, an apartment hallway, and that painting was on the wall, and you didn't even stop to look at the painting. Your head didn't even turn in that direction, but your brain saw that painting in the corner of your eye, and it put it in your memory, because the brain is the most complicated object ever discovered in the entire universe, and that goes for galaxies, planets, supernovas, stars, the most complicated thing in the entire universe is the human brain ever. The most complicated thing ever discovered is the human brain. And even though there are more galaxies than there are grains of sand on the earth, there are more neurons and connections in your brain than there are galaxies. So that could blow your mind. <laughs> Anyways, uh, the Mr. G podcast is available wherever you listen to podcasts. Uh, so you can listen to it on Apple Podcasts or Amazon Podcasts. Just type in Gregory Brandt Podcast or Mr. G Hawaii Podcast. There's actually a few Mr. G Podcasts, believe it or not. There's not many Mr. G's. Like if you go on Twitter and type Mr. G, you know, you have some show that was on 20 years ago. And then you have me, basically. And then there's a DJ Mr. G. But Mr. G Hawaii separates me from all the other Mr. G's. And Gregory Brandt, I'm at the top. There's like 300 Gregory Brandts, but I'm number one Gregory Brandt, B-R-A-N-D-T. All right, back to advertising. Some common subliminal images in advertising that you may not be aware of. The Amazon logo, all right? They've had the same logo since the 90s. But if you look closely at that Amazon logo, you know it has an arrow. Everybody knows the arrow. It kind of looks like a smile. So when you get a package, you're like, ooh, you know, but also if you look closer, it goes from the A in Amazon to the Z. So it goes from A to Z. And they want you to not consciously register that, but they want you to see that in your brain, A to Z, you know, so you know that Amazon has everything from A to Z. Another common one, Tostitos uh, salsa chips. Uh, if you look at the T-I-T -T and the word Tostitos, look at it right now. Google the word Tostitos. You've never seen this before, but in the, the logo Testitos, the T-I-T, -T, it's actually two people sharing nachos, sharing salsa tip, all right? And the last one I'll do, FedEx logo. That's the most common one that people are aware of. There's a hidden arrow in between the E and the X of FedEx, making you subliminally think, subliminally think oh, okay, FedEx, they're fast. They're, they're on the ball. They're on the dot. And... Um, it's all around, you know, uh, advertising. It's one of the most deceptive um, forms of communication uh, in, in the uh, communication school at the University of Texas. I remember it took a certain type of person uh, to be in the advertising program because you really, um, you know, you're, you're uh, uh, placing people against their selves and what's against their, in their best interest. Somebody like me, somebody who's got a huge heart, and extremely um, empathetic uh, would not ever be good in advertising. So what is the efficacy of subliminal advertising? Does it work? Does it shape consumer behavior? Well, research has shown that subliminal advertising isn't effective as it is perceived to be. One of the most famous experiments of this was conducted in 1975, uh, the Hershey chocolates experiments. Um, as far as subliminal images go, you can uh, see those. Those were very common on MTV and across um, Fox television. Uh, and people like myself that can see micro expressions also can see these subliminal images. 
And growing up, I would be watching television with people and be like, did you see that image of the guy holding the rooster? And I'm like, what? What are you talking about? Are you crazy? Like, no. Like, and, and, and it, you know, if you do a recording and you push pause and you hit it at the right spot, there is an image in there. I've uh, made videos with subliminal images and people have never noticed or seen the images as well. Um, but only a, a small percentage of the population can actually see micro expressions. A micro expression is an example would be like you see somebody you know at the grocery store, but they don't see you. And so you, you, you're kind of friends with them, you know them from work or school. And so you creep up to them so where they can't see you. And then you just tap them on the shoulder quickly and say, hey. And then you immediately look at their first expression on, on their face. And it only lasts for a couple of milliseconds. That's why I said most people cannot see micro expressions. So you tap them on the shoulder and you're like, hey, how's it going? And for a, a second before they put on their mask, you'll see if they have a, 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 a look of disgust, like, oh, you. Like, hey, hey, how's it going? Or, or they have a look of like a genuine uh, interest. Like, oh, it's my friend. Hey, you know, but people reveal themselves. And in those split seconds uh, that you first see them, that's called a micro expression. And the same people that can see micro expressions can also uh, detect, detect a fake smile. If you look at the uh, intro to Charles in Charge, it's a famous sitcom from the 1980s. And it's a classic 80s sitcom intro. They're all running around and everything. But then they all stand uh, and, and like a, a family photo. And the one girl, the older girl, she has like the fakest smile that I've ever seen. She's like, you know, like, you know to me, that's what it looks like. And I would be watching that with my siblings. We're like, hey, you guys see how she's like fake smiling? And they weren't able to determine what a fake smile is just like a real smile. And the majority of people, they cannot determine a fake smile from a real smile. I can easily. And if you look back at that show, there was a bunch of like uh, drama and different uh, emotional events that kids shouldn't be involved in uh, that was happening during filming of that show. So you could see why the uh, young actress would have to force a smile if she wasn't in the mood to smile. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> enough about me okay no but this is uh the mr g podcast this is something that i enjoy doing uh and i'm glad that you are listening and i'm glad that you're uh watching um on tiktok actually this isn't on tiktok actually the mr g podcast is on tiktok on a on a different tiktok page uh mr g podcast on tiktok but um advertising in general it's uh it's built to be deceptive. It's made to be deceptive. Uh, you're trying to convince people to purchase something or to do something or to have a political opinion. And you're trying to sway them uh, basically with any means necessary. Uh, sometimes they use emotional triggers and ads uh, to get you interested. Sometimes it's a uh, comedic effect. Sometimes it's, it's uh, everybody's doing it. And um, ads target the uh, most weakest of the group, uh, people that aren't strong-willed or strong mind. And you have to remember that when you're going through life, people are always trying to sell you something. And whether it's a, a multi-billion dollar company like Coca-Cola, or it's the guy next door, um, you know, you people are always looking out for their best interests and you wanna keep that in mind and take everything with a grain of salt including any claims made by any advertisers. One of the big uh, scams that happened in the last few years, it happened right when COVID happened in 2020. And it seemed like every other YouTube video, it was for like the solar charger and COVID had just happened. So people were like really buying solar stuff and thinking that the grid was gonna go down. And so the solar charger came on like every other YouTube video and it was only like $30 and uh, it charged your phone and it ran off the sun and it was just the greatest thing. And they sold so many of them. I purchased one as well. But the thing is, it was a total scam. And a friend of mine at the time, JR, also purchased one. We didn't even know it. I'm like, have you seen that solar charger on YouTube? It's like, oh, yeah, I bought one and it never came. I'm like, yeah, I bought one and it never came too. And I talked to a third person. They're like, yeah, I bought one and it never came too. So they just, you know, eliminated the company, took down the ads took the money and ran. And that was through uh, uh, one of the largest companies in the world, YouTube, Google. Uh, so people uh, will always be deceptive, especially when it comes to advertising. 
And that's why I say um, never uh, be so solid on anything. The smartest people in the world, they uh, they wait to pass judgment on anything. And that, that's including myself. I don't know if aliens exist. I don't know who should be the next president. You know, I, I weigh every single option. Sometimes you really do want to put your foot down. Uh, but most of the time you want to uh, hold out and wait for more information. All right. With that being said, thank you guys for listening. And I hope you all have a wonderful day from me and my street cats. Aloha.